Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hello and welcome people. Welcome to Footy Judge Mo. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Happy Eid everybody. This is your counter view of Thursday. Of course, you know it's Elbian Osam, but Osam is with his tribe. As you guys know, of course, it's Eid. He's going around the family, collecting idea, if you know what that is. But we replaced him with someone. I'm not sure if it's better or not. Nick is here from the football <laughs> club. On, man. Of course, Nick is here. No, Sam is gonna roast you now. Just about this. 100 percent I'm waiting, I'm waiting for a message from him right now. 100 percent And of course, with Rory, of course, to talk about the Arsenal double. Is it still alive? Is it still alive? Is it better than Man City's triple? That's what we're talking about. And LB, of course, is here. He's blessing us with his appearance, of course. Absolutely brilliant. Guys, these guys are absolutely giving giving me their time so please hit that like button now if you just joined us if you're watching this on the replay like the video before we go on and also we'll talk about manchester united grand potter is almost done to manchester believe it or not man united go to from ten hag to grand potter it cannot get any worse than this however we'll talk about that and we'll talk about the rest that rodri needs We'll talk about the weekend, of course, but big up everybody that is here. Hit that like button, people. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And how is everybody doing after the storm of the Champions League? Lots of goals we've seen in this quarterfinal. Mm. Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? Been a, been a decent um, week of Champions League football. Goals galore. So, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's good. It's exciting. Yeah. Very, very exciting indeed. And Liverpool today play in the, in the Europa League. But listen, there's only one place to start, which is Manchester United and this Graham Potter thing to Manchester United. They had a meeting with Jim Ratcliffe that he's probably going to be the next coach. A lot of Man United fans, I think they're doing the copium thing. They're just, whatever, it's, we're going to cope with the situation. You know what I mean? It is, it is what it is. He's a good manager. He was good at Brighton. He finished top half of the table. He's English and this and that. How, how are we feeling about this? How, because I, when I was like doing this, I think they're done. It's over. It doesn't feel ambitious. It doesn't feel it. It feels kind of like, I mean, United have been stuck in the jobs for mates thing for a long time with not very successful English people getting the jobs. And it feels like they're doing the same again. Like I actually do rate Graham Potter and I think he could do a good job if he's, if he's given the right tools. But, I'm just like, if it doesn't start well, because he's ex-Chelsea, failed in his last job, it just sets up. Like, people will turn on him very quickly compared to a, a fresh manager from a different league or something. So, or, or a manager that's proven that they can be successful. So, yeah, it could it could turn toxic quite quickly. Um, and then, and yeah, it's just not, it's not ambitious, is it? I don't think actually it's going to work. What do you think, Nick? I don't think it's going to work at all, by the way. I think he's going to flop. Uh I um, mean, speaking of new managers, I just seen Amarim apparently hasn't met with Liverpool. There's no agreement in principle, and I'm I'm seeing United fans and other other rival fans saying this is hilarious. Everyone's rejecting him. I'm like, well, you can't reject somebody if you've never given an offer. But funny that they're laughing at us when they've got Graham Potter coming in, who got sacked from Chelsea after what yeah months as it was. And United fans, I mean, you thought he couldn't get any worse. I mean, I don't know where the hell they go from here, man. Like, Ten Hag is great, and then everything turned to shit, and now it's, well, Graham Potter's in here. Well, would you rather Graham Potter or Gareth Southgate? You pick one. I'm not sure. I actually think Graham Potter might actually... This might actually sink the club for, like, two, three years. Like, I think this can be, like, another Oli. Like, I think this can be even worse than Ten Hag. Um... I actually look at this Grand Potter guy and I think a lot of people think that he's very good. I know a lot of people rate him. I thought his time at Brighton was all right. Yes, he got him promoted. Yes, he got them top off the table once. But people remember that they couldn't score goals. That more than like, like more times than not, they finished bottom half of the table. They struggled for relegation. They finished like 17, 16. It's not like he took a club and finished top half of the table. People are excited because he played an attacking football or position-based football, and he has a style of play, but the results were not coming. So I believe this is just... They couldldn't attract big managers, so they, they said, oh, yeah, we'll get Graham Potter. I think they tried with, with, with top managers, and they didn't want to join. I don't know where this club is going, and the problem is, when I ask LB about this, because he's a Man City fan, they keep thinking we're big Man United the fans because they make money because the fan base is big 
And I sat down on the football terrace and I told that to Terry. Manchester United fans think that the world owes them something. Like, because they're Manchester United. Like, we're owed something. Like, we, we have to win because we're just Manchester United. Like, some of the Liverpool fans thought for years until they actually won, until they got it right. Uh, how did, Do you see this actually going in the right direction at all, Graham Potter? No. Uh, this, is, this is just a terrible, terrible appointment. I mean, I'm looking at his managerial career here. Uh, it's really not that impressive, right? So, if we go back to Swansea, yeah? He finished 10th in the Championship. Right? First mm-hmm. season with Brighton, finished 15th in the Premier League. Second season, finished 16th. It's actually got worse. Third season, finished 9th. And then in the in the fourth season, he only managed six games. And obviously, he was fourth at that point, but it was only six games. They went to Chelsea, difficult conditions, didn't do particularly well there. I mean, I, I, even even Ostersunds, the team that he was at before Swansea, you know, he finished eighth, fifth, seventh. I'm sorry, am I missing something here? Yeah, me too. I, I looked at it. I'm like, and the problem is some Man United fans keep saying we'll rate him. Like, okay, some Arsenal fans like, of what, oh, say we rate him. Well, I, the, I remember... I think st- it started, the whole Graham Potter fight originally started, if I remember, because of a Europa League run with Ostersons. I think we played them in the Europa League. And I think that's where it, uh, and at that point, like before that, he was managing at like a university in England or something. And they were like, he got to Ostersons. So I think that's where it kind of started. And then I guess at Brighton, like, I guess when they were finishing 15th, 16th, was it not a time where they were really predicted to be relegated? Uh, and it was actually like, he didn't do a bad job in terms of keeping them up and then taking them up to ninth. Kind of like when Thomas Frank came up with Brentford. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, they finished 16th, know. yeah. They finished 16th Rory, in, uh, Rory, in one Allard season. Di- Sam Allard dies, always kept the teams up. That doesn't mean he's good. Yeah, but because then Potter like... <laughs> I'm actually, sorry. No, no, I agree. I agree. But then because Potter actually like developed the way that Brighton played into what was a, an attractive side to watch, at least. I, I think that's... Uh, Vincent yeah, Company plays more attractive football than Grand Potter. And he put... No, I agree. Should I agree. They hire, should they hire him? No, because Grand Potter... Do you believe it's all about the English bias? I'm, I'm being uh, yeah, very honest. You think, yeah, but, but Ineos have made it clear when they came in that they... They want to prioritise, well, supposedly Sir Jim Ratcliffe wants to prioritise English, both players and staff. So, why, why are they doing that though, Rory? I mean, they've done this before. Strange, they've done this bro. before with, with, with English players when they went out and bought like the Luke Shaws and they, they bought a few other ones. Like, I just yeah, I feel that like, I just don't, I just don't get this. And I'm looking at, I'm looking at, so I'm looking at his European record. Again, it's, it's, it's not particularily great. He's, he's, he's what he's got a 50% win rate in, in the Europa League. Um, I, I just don't I got he's got he's got Ostersons to the intermediate stage of the Europa League, which is I think is sort of like the round of thirty two, which isn't really the like, isn't really the round of thirty two. I, I just don't get it. What? Because he beat Arsenal. He beat Arsenal in twenty eighteen. I think that's two one. <laughs> like this is <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is honestly ridiculous. Like I do not see the hype. Yeah, and this is exactly what we did with Ten Hag, by the way. Exactly what we did with Ten Hag. Uh, when, when, no, 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 no. Hang on a minute. Let, let me put my case forward. When, okay. when United got to Nike the first time, everyone went, oh, my God, he plays amazing football at Ajax. Oh, my God, his Champions League record is great. When you actually look at the information, his Champions League record stinks. <laughs> he, got to, he got to one semi-final with Ajax, right? Which, by the way, they absolutely bottled every other Champions League campaign. Massively disappointing. Massively. They even failed to get out of group a couple of times in favourable groups. So what we I think what we do is is as as fans nowadays people don't actually look at the full record they just go oh they beat Arsenal once in Europa League or oh he done this with Brighton and it's actually like, oh hang on a minute I mean he's been managing seven years are we saying that you're going to give him the job on Manchester United because he beat Arsenal in a Europa League game which I don't know Rory I hazard a guess you probably you guys probably feel the weakened team so it was not even that impressive at the time like come on man what what are we doing here. Do you know he was I mean? actually like... interviewed by Ajax. Sorry, what was that? He was interviewed by Ajax. They yeah, yeah, yeah. Down, and yeah. they rejected him. And he said no, yeah. I was like, wow. And they said so no. I, I thought he said no. Mm. 
I think he said no, which that which is why people think he's definitely going to go to United because if if he if he's turning down Ajax, he must think that he's got something big lined up because he's, he's hired the Man United. He shouldn't job. even be Glory, getting the Ajax. I think he's going to get the Man United job. I think no, he's getting the United job. Yeah, yeah, me too. I like all the reports are saying that they aren't linked to anyone else, right? He, they aren't linked to anyone else. Every time they try to talk to someone, the reports are rubbishing that. There, there, even the Tiago Motta links, right, from Bologna. In Italy, he said no, right? He's staying at Bologna. Juventus tried, he's there. Inzaghi is a no-go. Is the Zerbi going to go? I don't know. Like, is he going to go? I, I actually don't think so. But I think there are better candidates. Go get Xavi from Barcelona, who's leaving. Why not? A Spanish manager. You know, he plays Tiki Taka for he would. I don't think he'd go there, though, this, this is part of the problem. Uh -huh, I wanted to ask you this. You yeah. think yeah. that this is, this is... You think that what I said <laughs> about a month ago and it pissed off people that Man United aren't attractive is actually well, true? Well, 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 of course they're, they're not. not they're, they're not attractive right now. Go, go on. Uh, you can take this one. No, of course they're not. Like, look at the mud that they're in. One week they're playing okay. The next week they're losing to, like, you know... Bournemouth or whatever, and then manager wins, manager of the month, player of the month, etc. And then they get pumped, and then there's another string of like three, four losses and draws. And then you see what's happening behind the scenes with the the ownership and the changes. And Ten Hag's staying, no, he's leaving. This player's not performing. This player wants to go. Sancho's out on loan. Is he going to come back? And all this sort of stuff. I don't see a manager of a high level looking at that, thinking I want to go there and change it up. Is is Xavi the type of manager to go there and change everything altogether? He he'd be better off staying at Barcelona. To be fair, he's not staying. He's not staying. But he'd be better. But I'm saying, but he'd be better off staying there instead of going to United. The thing is, if you look at the way that United have just eaten up managers for nearly a decade now, like no one has taken the man the the manager job at United and come out better for it, right? So they've eaten up managers, and now you're looking at it going. Supposedly, Ineos basically want full control of of everything in terms of who they sign and all the rest of it. So you're going to come in as a manager and almost just be a coach, really, and play with the players that are given to you. So you're looking at it, if you're Xavi, going, okay, so I'm going to come into this team. The squad is on its knees at this point, uh, and there's going to be a lot of rotation with the squad, and that's going to be managed by people that I don't know, I don't trust, and I've never seen them do it before. Like, that is a huge gamble to take that a top manager isn't going to isn't going to take that risk. So I think you have to go to the next level for a, for a manager that's willing to take that risk just to get Man United on their CV. Mm. I actually for me when I said Man United aren't attractive I said the job is too much of a risk. People just don't understand. You can literally go there and destroy your reputation if you fail again. Look at Ten Hag. People say but Ten Hag is going to go get a top job. No, he won't. People think that if he goes back to Ajax, it's a tough job. It's a top job. If he goes to Dortmund, it's a top job. That's a downgrade from a Man United job. If people understand, he literally Ten Hag literally destroyed his reputation in European, mm -hmm. right? If he gets another job, it will be another club that is desperate for a manager, right? That will take a risk. Like you aren't hiring someone who's successful. This is why I thought when even the Zerbi. I said, if the Zerbi goes to Man United, it's because he's desperate to leave Brighton. It's not because he wants to go to Manchester United. It's because he there was no other job that offered to him. Now it's the Bayern Munich job is offered to him. He would not choose Man United over Bayern Munich. Like, there's no way he would do that. There's no way Amram would do this. There is no way Inzaghi, for example, to do this from Inter. And I said that Inzaghi, for example, and pe people got pissed off when I said that. Why would he leave Inter? To go to Man United unless they offer him triple his salary. They don't, by the way, they don't have the money to spend in the transfer market. People think that Man United have money. They don't. They they have to sell a lot of players. And some of their players aren't sellable. Casimiro isn't sellable. <laughs> Varane isn't sellable. Luke Shaw isn't sellable. Harry Maguire can barely get 30 million for him. McTominay. The, like, you're not going to be able to raise 200 million to spend in the summer. You, you just won't. Unless you go and sell back Marcus Rashford. And to replace Marcus Rashford, you'll need a player from that caliber, which will cost you the same money or more than what you said. So you're literally replacing Marcus Rashford, but paying on top of his, his, uh, his, uh, whatever. Uh, and some of these players, by the way, Mo, are on mega cash. It's not going to be easy to get rid of them. Yeah, Sancho, Rashford, yeah, you Bruno, know, they, they, Casemiro. Even Ant Anthony is on like 200 yeah. grand a week. 
it's going to take it's going to take it's going to take years for Manchester United to get back to the levels of Arsenal and City. And Can I ask you something? I'll be honest, like honest, years. honest answer, no banter. Do you think Man United fill in the hole that Liverpool fill in, and Arsenal? Um, the Liverpool is slightly different. I think the way that they 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 ended up in that situation was different, but they definitely ended up in that situation because it's a decade of mismanagement. Mm. I mean, let's be honest; it would be a miracle if they're not fucked. I mean, it's been a it's been a decade of appointing the wrong managers, buying the wrong players, and having no strategy from above. No strategy. It's not. It's not a shock. It's not a surprise that they're screwed, and and because it took a decade to get themselves into this mess. It's going to take them years to get out of it because you can only do so much in, in one transfer window. And actually, now with the FFP regulations that, that, that's in, it's probably even harder. You know, probably if you've done it a decade ago when City were coming in and you can just go bang, 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 bang and, and catch up really quick, probably easier. Now you can't do that. It's going to take years for them to, to compete. Now they yeah, might be able to get back into the Champions League. Well. Yeah, yeah, players yeah, they yeah. turned through as well throughout the years, man. Like you look at some of the players that came and went in there as well, even for a season or two. Still, like there, there's no chance those players should have left there without winning something more substantial. Obviously, Mourinho is probably the only one there that actually has some credit in the bank with United. But even then, look at how they ousted him. Mm. But they've just yeah. appointed the wrong managers, bro. They appointed the wrong mm. managers at the wrong times. They went from different style of play to different style of play with each and every manager, which required a different set of players. They couldn't do that in one, which is why they never fully achieved what they should have achieved for the amount of money that they spent. And now they finally got this new guy in. And I think they realise that, no, 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 we can't continue like this. They've got to, I mean, no one knows what the United way of playing is. Like they need to, they need to, from the top, they need to say the whole club is playing this brand of football, whatever that is, long ball, direct football, passing football, counter attacking. It really doesn't matter. They just need to, they just need to pick one and stick with it. And, and, and you need to give the manager now, unfortunately, because I don't really like this style of management these days, but you're going to have to give the, the manager time. And then if it doesn't work, you get a manager in who plays the same football. So you're not chopping and changing. The staff, you think when Pep Guardiola goes, we're going to get a Mourinho type manager in? No, no we're just not. Are we? We're going to get someone who plays the same sort of football that, that Pep Guardiola plays a passing based football. You think when Arteta leaves Arsenal, they're going to go to Oli, counter attacking football? They're not. They're going to get the same sort of manager in because that's, that's how you do it. You can't just chop and change managers with styles. And that's what they've done. So I find it hilarious, to be honest with you. I think it's I think it's I think it's amazing. But the, the thing is that I've always said though, and this is actually like for real, is because of how much money they spend, they will always still be up there and winning trophies. Like if you look actually at this decade, I think Liverpool have won only two more trophies than United in the last decade. Now, granted, they have won the Premier League and the Champions League, but in terms of just trophies and silverware, Liverpool's actual total haul isn't that much bigger than, than United's. And that's because United spend so much money that they will always be competing for FA Cups. Uh, Carabao Cups and stuff. But to win the major honours, they, they they have to change. They just must. They have to change, but I don't think they're going to change. I think they're going to... I think Harry and Graham Potter will actually put them back two years. I, I, I genuinely think so. And How uh, many think, hmm? how many United players, current United players, do you actually think can play... If Assuming Graham Potter continues to want to play the style that, that he implemented at Brighton. There's maybe like two or three players at United two, that I actually three players. think can play that level. Yeah, Three players. And four, Lissandro, Onana, Kobe Meno, Diego Dallo. That's yeah. it. I think Everyone Shaw else has to go. I think, I, think, I think Luke Shaw would have, he's never fit. Yeah, but, but he's he never available. To... I, I won't count yeah. Luke Shaw, he's never available. Yeah, yeah but sure. I'm just saying he would be available. And maybe, and maybe Haaland could, uh, Hoyland could still be the long-term striker. Maybe Hoyland. Maybe. Of, yeah. I, think so, Anthony, so... I think Anthony, actually, he might laugh, but he probably could actually fit into that style if he could be coached to be actual proper footballer rather than mm. messing around like he's on the five-a-side pitch. I think he actually could, could potentially do it. Hoyland's struggling to get chances and score, so they get a manager that struggled to Hold whole, whole his career for his team to score goals. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think someone sat there and thought, yes, we struggled to score goals. We only scored like 38 goals in the league. Let's go get the manager that struggled the most in the last years to get goals. Yes. <laughs> I think this is the right decision. I think they sat together and this is the decision. I like it. It's fantastic. Anyway, moving on from Man United because I don't think they are news anymore, which is another thing that Man United fans don't think so. Every time you talk to somebody, they think Man United are the news. I don't think so. Oh, they tweet about us at all. You talk about us at all. I haven't done a video about Man United for about a month. 
<laughs> my numbers are okay. But by the way, my numbers are very good. Alhamdulillah. There's nothing happened to me. <laughs> nothing. They, they do their own content. Big up Saeed and the rest of them. They do their own like talk and stuff. I, I'd like, I, I don't talk about money. Like, there's nothing to talk about. Well, I'm talking about you because now Graham Potter is news. Oh my God. Some people are so uh, sensitive. Anyway, I'm trying to find news. This is the only news. Anyway, move, moving on from Manchester United to actually Erling Haaland. I don't want to spend a lot on this because I know LB will get upset. Erling Haaland, is he struggling? Why would he be struggling? Listen, he's useless. If he doesn't score, your players are skipping him. Is, it, is, it, is he useless? They he's say him that. I don't, I don't think so. That. I don't think he's useless. <laughs> do, you think oh, Van Der Vaart, do you think Van der Vaart was speaking out of his ass? I think Van Vaart fucking appears to be a miserable sod who's slagging everyone off at the moment. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So um, I think actually, if you look at recent games, he scored I, I five. Think... LB, he scored five goals in the last ten games in the Premier League. Five okay. goals. Is that a good? Is that a what good mean? like return for someone that doesn't offer anything else? But you, but that's your perception that he doesn't offer anything else. Okay, I would argue. Enlighten that, me. I, I, I would argue that actually that's not the case. Enlighten us. The space that we got outside the Real Madrid box, does that happen if Haaland's not there? The space that Kevin very, De Bruyne got very, at Very subjective Palace. and questionable. Well, I'm asking you the question. Is it a surprise? Is it a surprise that, that, that we scored how many goals from the edge or just inside the, the penalty area mm -hmm. in these last few games when Haaland's been there, Grealish has been there? Because Grealish is another one that gets the same criticism as Haaland. And and if I actually my 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 belief is that those two players create space for other players like Kevin De Bruyne and Foden to play football in the middle of the park. I'm saying since Grealish has come back into the side, Kevin De Bruyne at the weekend got two goals. We scored two goals from outside the penalty area against Real Madrid. I believe that it creates space for the likes of Foden and Kevin De Bruyne to thrive in the middle. Mm -hmm. And, 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 you know, we were scoring goals from the edge of the box because this space, because teams get so obsessed on marking Haaland. I mean, did you see Rudiger? Guy's yeah. practically hugging him the whole game. He's like, it's the whole game because he doesn't want Haaland to, to, to get any space. So Haaland drops deep. That gives space for Foden, gives space for KDB. All right. I'm, I'm not sure. Like I'm looking at it and I'm telling you, yes, Haaland is actually occupy space and do the stuff. But I think, in my opinion, Pep Guardiola way, Maybe if you could, you can have someone else that can actually get involved in the game. The guy had six passes in the game against Real Madrid. Yes, he scored three goals, but with individual brilliance. You're arguing that the space is there because he is there. But at the end, sometimes he just doesn't get involved. He's he's just not involved at all. Is that enough for a Pep Guardiola player? Because clearly, Holland, clearly Holland, Holland, Holland right now, doesn't offer... The problem is for me sometimes, Holland doesn't offer a lot if he isn't touching the ball. Yeah, but we all, we, all, we all knew this, though. This isn't new news. Okay, so if he's... Okay, but last season, he was scoring abundance of goals and in the beginning of the season. So that means you're getting the return. But now, if he isn't scoring, if he isn't scoring, what is he offering? Just him being there? Well, you, can have someone, you can have someone cheaper there. He's got 36 goal involvements this season. I mean, what, what are we doing here? I'm talking about in the league because there's five goals against Luton. When Luton played the high line, allowing all the space to haul in the back, right? I'm talking about in the league. I'm, I'm just going to tell you, so if Oli Watkins or Dominic Solanke is scoring kind of the same amount of goals and getting involved the same amount, isn't that a testament? And he's playing a way better team. Isn't that a testament to how he's not performing up to the standards? Well, if you're getting the best striker around the world, and we all agree he's the best striker around in the world. And you're not you're getting the same return as an Oli Watkins or Dominic Solanke. Don't you so, think yeah, but, that's no, no, underwhelming? No, 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 because what you're doing is hey, you're falling into the Mikel Antonio school of thinking, who goes, Oh, I could score 30 goals if I play for Manchester City, yet when he's one on one with the goalkeeper, he just kicks the ball straight at him and doesn't go for any placement at all. Erling Haaland's got 24 GA this year in 25 Premier League games. He missed five matches when he was injured. I think personally, when he come back from that injury, he wasn't fully fit anyway because he was really, really slow and like just his, his agility on the pitch was like really slow. I think he's now getting back to his best. And yeah, again, I just think that like if he wasn't doing what Pep wanted him to do, he wouldn't be playing. So clearly, this Pep is, is what happy. Man City fans tell us, LB. 
no, 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 you think Pep cares about having a little bit of a beef with Haaland? This guy's beef players in the past. If he wasn't happy with him, he'd drop him. He'd play Alvarez. He'd play a false nine. He's not just going to stick with him because of some random reason. So clearly he is happy with him. My, is it my... just a fear factor? Fear factor of what? Oh, of Haaland being there at the forward line. If he's only going to get six touches in a game, for example, is it like a fear factor? Like, holy shit, we've got Erling Haaland here. We better watch him. Like, he occupies the space I think, I think that's that allows everyone else to Bro, play. Teams shit themselves when... when and It's probably the same with Salah, to be fair. Because I, I get the same view when I play Liverpool when Salah's playing. When Haaland's on the pitch, teams drop deeper. Because they don't want the space in behind for Haaland. That, and, and then obviously, then you get Grealish on the left, who does the same sort of thing. Players go to him for some reason. And that creates space in the middle. I mean, the way Real Madrid fans was going on, praising Rudiger. Oh my God, Rudiger. The best performer, the best centre-back in European football. We scored three goals, man. What are you talking about? You know what I mean? Oh, but we stopped Haaland. Great. Well done, man. You closed your roof. Everyone turned up in white clothes. Rudiger had a great game and you still conceded three goals. I mean, the club's fallen off, man. I don't know what's going on here. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know what we're meant to be doing. Like, what, they used to make the, the same arguments with Firmino at Liverpool. Like, he doesn't score goals, but he occupies the spaces. He he drags defenders out of position, lets Salah run into space, Mane run into space, sort of a thing. But he wasn't an out-and-out -out striker. I think because Haaland is an out-and-out -out striker, when he's not scoring, that's why people are saying... What else is he doing? Because they're not looking at the little things that he may be doing on the pitch, like dragging uh, defenders out of position or maybe scaring the opposition, thinking like, holy shit, this guy can just turn it on at any moment, not realizing Doku's coming on one side, Grealish on the other side, Foden's going to bomb one in from outside the box because Haaland's ran in and, and left a bit of a space, a bit of a gap open, you know what I mean? I guess what? you could say, the only thing I agree with, LB, on, on most of what he's saying, the only thing I would say is that if you're talking about the, the big strength of Haaland at the moment being that you've got space on the edge of the box, you're still going to, you're relying on players scoring worldies, basically. Like the Real Madrid game, there's a world in which you walk away from that game with no goals if those screamers don't go in. So it's not, you could look at it and say it's not as sustainable as even the Haaland that we saw last year that was bagging the goals himself. Let me, well, let me you, translate you, you the, let me, let me, let me, LB, can I say, Pep didn't do the lecture and saying, yes, we're going to push everybody in the 18 to get it to Gavardio to his right foot so he can score a banger. I don't think that was in the lecture, by the way. I think that's just uh, Gavardio. It's an individual brilliance moment. The Foden one, I agree with you, outside the area, because I've seen it now about three or four times. But I think some of you are go like, I don't think they're like, yeah, Bernardo, you're going you're gonna to wrap it around the, the wall and the goalkeeper will just mess it up and you'll score. I get the Foden goal, which is something that we have been repetitively seeing from outside the area. But what Rory is saying, the individual brilliance that the other players did, I don't think that's the plan, though. Like, I don't think it's Gavardio scoring with the right foot is the plan. No, 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 but I don't think that is. I think it's a consequence of the plan. The plan is still to try and create chances for Haaland. You know what I mean, we're not acting as if like, oh, yeah, Haaland. They haven't. They haven't, LB. I'm, I'm aware of that. But what do you want to do about that? But the, your players are skipping him. If he's not in the game, your players are completely... No, 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 no. Like, they are our skipping players him. Are not, the our, players are, our players are not capable of finding him enough. We don't create him chances. It's not a case of they're, they're not passing in the ball. They don't know how to, some of these players. You know I mean, Kevin so De Bruyne... He's really. a chances player. No chances, no goals then. Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah, but that's 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 quite that's quite obvious, isn't it? No great chances. I, he's not going to score I, yeah, goals. But some other players... And I think that's what people are saying. No, no, chance. yeah. I think that's why people well, no. are having all these... Like even Mohamed Salah, him. for example. Mohamed Salah, if he doesn't score, people say, yeah, you don't offer anything. Mohamed Salah still creates a couple of chances in the game. Gabriel Jesus, sometimes. And I'm, I'm saying look that at what... different, different types of players. Yeah, I was going to say, look at, look at what Kane did at the Emirates compared to Haaland. Like, Kane dropped off and was causing absolute havoc for us because he'd come into the pocket, pick up the ball, and find Sane or Nabry in behind repeatedly. Like... That is how you can change a game without being the goal scorer. And I guess and Haaland does. But, but Haaland can't I said do that. something yesterday. I said something yesterday. Arteta 
because he played against Man City before at the Emirates and his defenders were able to dominate Haaland and actually mark him out of the game, he thought he's playing Haaland. He thought Saliba and Gabriel can do the same what they did with Haaland with Harry Kane. But Harry Kane is different than Haaland. So Harry Kane caused all these problems and troubles. And that's what we're talking about, LB. Like, sometimes you need another way of playing football, another type of striker. Do you agree or you disagree with this? No? I don't, I don't think you need that another type of striker at all. Harry Kane is a completely different type of player to, to Erling Haaland. You can't compare the two. They're completely different. Erling Haaland is a box player. You've got to get the ball in the box in a six-yard area. Yeah, his, his movement is, a, is one of the world is world-class poacher, elite movement. Kane is a completely different player. That guy drops into the middle, playing balls in behind for runners. We don't have runners. Jack Grealish doesn't make runs in behind defence. Bernardo Silva doesn't make runs in behind defence. It'd be pointless Haaland dropping in to do what? Play a ball over the top for Grealish or Bernardo. It's not happening, man. Do you know what I mean? So there's no point in comparing the two players. It's completely stupid. The facts are, we need to create more chances for Erling Haaland. We're not. A lot of the games this season where he's not scored, it's because we've not created him chances. Wolves away, Arsenal away for, for, for starters. Aston Villa, three games that we lost. He had zero chances, man. Zero. Is that his fault? Are we saying that's his fault? No, it's not. We're not creating chances. He's not going to score a goal. Now, a large part of that is due to the fact that Kevin De Bruyne is really the only player in this team that actually plays balls in for him. If he's not in the team, he, he don't really get too many chances. But a consequence of having Haaland is that there is space on the edge of the box. I'm not saying that's the strategy. I'm not saying that Pep Guardiola is in training saying, right, lads, we're going to score by getting the ball to the edge of the box. No, no, no. The, the, the strategy is still to try and create still try and create chances for Haaland. But the consequence of Haaland being there is that there is the space. And you can say it's not sustainable. We scored from the edge of the penalty area against your team in the Champions League final. We scored loads of goals this season. We scored against United from the edge of the box. We scored against Real Madrid from the edge of the box. We've scored countless goals for the edge of the box. We have players that are capable of doing it. Is that the plan? No, it's clearly not. But it's clearly a strategy. It's clearly a consequence of the strategy. And our players are able to do it. Rodri, for example, is superb. Yeah, OK. As you do know. you think that... No, thank you for, uh, for the explanation. Do you think uh, the game, a lot of people are saying it's still a 50-50 or we still Real Madrid have a chance, you can go to the Etihad and get a win. Are you worried at all? Well, I think I think anyone that's not worried about Real Madrid's overconfident or just arrogant. You know what I mean? I'm still worried. They're still a mint team. Um, but I think it's a fantastic result. Great result. If you would have said to me, back at the Etihad, one-off game, I yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I think City will be favourites to go through. Um, I actually was quite disappointed with Real Madrid. I felt that other than the counter-attack, they offered very little. But when we got our players behind the ball, they really struggled to break us down. Their only real threat was the counter-attack. Hopefully, Kyle Walker will be back for the second leg because, you know, without him, we, we struggled a little bit. But and we played bad. Like, we played poorly at the Bernabeu and still got a 3-3 draw. I think it's a great result. So, if we get better in the home leg, which I'm sure we will, hopefully we can get Kyle Walker back in. I, th I think that, you know, I'm well, hopeful that we'll go through. You can't not be scared of, like, you can't be sitting here and say, oh, I'm not scared at all of Real Madrid. I mean, that's just silly. But they, 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 you should they, be they, confident, they, though. You should be very no, confident. I'm, 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 well, not very I'm confident that we'll go through, but like, they know that was a missed opportunity. All the players have no, since come out of the game. Rodrigo's saying it feels like a loss. Valverde's gutted. You know what I mean? They're all crying about the result because they know that coming to the Etihad is, is a difficult place to play football. So, Let's see what happens, man. I'm confident that we can do it, but you still have to respect Real Madrid. They're still a, they're still a mint side. Um, but I, I think we'll do it, man. I think we'll get through. Yeah, I actually think Manchester City will go through without a shadow of a doubt in my mind. I think I'll be very, very surprised if Real did win that game. Did you, did, you, did you watch the game? No. Yeah. Do you agree with me that actually, other than the counter-attack, they were very poor? But it's not only counter-attack. So I disagree with the wording that you said. It's it's transition. It's the Real Madrid are one of the teams in the world that have the ability to bypass Man City's press. It's not counter-attack. It's, I get what you're talking about. It's behind your press. Does that make sense? And your defense yeah. is okay. going watching again. Did you notice the only way Real Madrid can win at the Etihad, if they take every chance they get? Because Man City's defense lately have been ball watching. I believe if Kyle Walker is fit, half of these chances were not going to be created. Because they're all running behind your defense and your defense is ball watching. Diaz had an awful game. 
in terms of positioning. Vinny Jr. ran behind him plenty of times. Rodrigo was able to get spaces. The problem is your defense, for some reason, they lack focus. They lack concentration. They're ball watching. You know what ball watching is. They're uh, watching I, the guy. I think they, you're going way over the top, bro. It happened you, in the Crystal Palace game. Same ball. No, 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 no. But but, but that's different. We, we accept this is going to happen. We In a Premier League, I believe Kyle Walker recovery is masking that. Kyle Walker recovery pace has been masking yeah, but this. Ruben, Ruben Diaz is a slow footballer. What yes. do you expect him to do? Match the pace of Vinny Jr.? No, I said that, I wouldn't even not, play. Vin, I wouldn't play Diaz on on Wednesday against Real yeah. Madrid. Okay. Let me let me tell you what I think. What I'm expecting. I'm expecting the defense to not play in a halfway line with Vinny Jr. and Rodrigo making. So, so, so you're questioning Pep Guardiola then? That's yes. what he wants mm. us to do. Ah uh, yes. Am I not allowed when you when you literally had Vinny Jr. and Rodrigo running for fifty yards with the ball against your goalkeeper or your defenders? Am I not and allowed they, to do that? They well, didn't well, score because they were idiots and they were bozos in, 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 around well, the 18. Well, that's, that's, that's the risk. That's the risk and reward. Oh, well, that, here that we we'll go. Play. So it could have been very risky then. Am I wrong? Well, it is a risky strategy. That's the whole okay. point. So, okay. The fact is, okay. he's, he's I agree played with, the risky we agree strategy. Then. We agree. We agree. Yeah, and and your and it was right. The strategy in the end was correct because we didn't get thumped. A high risk, high reward. It's high risk, high reward. You go there, and we've we've drawn. So you're three. telling me that your 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 strategy is relying on the players going two on two and one on one and missing the chances. Well, I, so you think Pep Guardiola? You think Madrid. yes, yes. You think Pep Guardiola in the lecture is saying we'll play high line. We know that they're gonna go behind, guys. Let's hope they don't score. But we're still gonna try to outscore them. Do you think that's? I, I, I think you've got to accept that. You got to be brave, man. You can't just be shitting it against Real Madrid. We played this oh, way right, three then. years on the bounce against Real Madrid. It's oh. not a surprise. We did it last year. We did it the year before. But you had Kyle Walker, and he still got in. But Kyle Walker recovers. That's the whole point. Yeah, but you can't. You can't. You just play like, the same way. With, you, it'll be. You can't just. You sit play here the and go, same way without Kyle Walker in. Yes, and I want us to do that. I don't want us to just be a team where if Kyle Walker's not in, we go, right, sorry, lads, Kyle Walker's not in. We're changing up the whole way we're playing. I want us to be brave. I want us to go to the Bernabeu and play our football. That's what we did. Yes, you're going to concede chances, but that's the way you, That's the way the game goes. You've got to be a bit lucky in this What's, tournament. That's not what you did last season. We, 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 we took it to... We, yeah, no, no, but that was that was slightly different. In Madrid, we, we, you know exactly what I'm talking about. In yeah, Madrid, but, when you got hit by the counter, Pep Guardiola told his team, leave the ball to Real Madrid and drop a little bit deeper. Again, it's Inter because we had Unana. He said, do not press that high. Play a little bit deeper. Wait for the press. And he said that in a press conference. He adapted. He yeah, Last bro, season, the reason why you won... We, and I, 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 I genuinely said that. This is no banter, nothing. I believe the reason why Pep Guardiola completed the football last season and won the triple with with Manchester City because he was a little bit adaptable, different than him playing against Real Madrid, winning in the Bernabeu the year, the year before or two years before, and going full guns blazing. When he got scored on in the counter-attack in Madrid last season, he said, hold on, I don't want to be torn nailed down. I don't want this to happen every 10 minutes. Real Madrid, you have the ball, and I'm going to try to break you the other way around. He learned. He adapted against Inter. He changed, and he said that. But you want to tell me that you want to have the same exact plan no, without regards to the personnel that are there? Yeah, I want to have the same plan. So do you want to have the same plan if Haaland is not there then, or only the defensive side? If Haaland uh -huh. isn't available, would you mm -hmm. agree that you have to change a little bit of the plan? Well, it depends who you, who you play up top. You could, you Thank could, you could, you, you could don't have, have another Holland. There is no two Hollands in the world. It's either Holland or someone else that is different. Right? Yeah. Would you, you accept still, you that you have to change ask... the plan? Well, you don't have to accept it. You don't have to change the plan. You could still, you could still have Alvarez play in a similar way to 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 Haaland. Would you and, do that? And you think I that's smart? Well, it could be. He can be a fox in a box. He's a good goal scorer. He could, he can, you can certainly do that. There's no reason yeah. why you have to change it up. Or you could play him deeper. You could play, you could play him as a sort of more false nine coming into midfield. It's up. It depends what you want to do. You don't have to change it up. There's no requirement to change it up. But oh, we right. went to the Bernabeu. We played our football. Okay, that's we my gave, opinion. We gave Real Madrid the option of going in behind. And it could us. have been a disaster. And it you know, you could have disaster. been three one down. You could have been four one down. Vinicius and Rodrigo and were going two on two. 
when it was 2-1 up for them like twice, three times. And, and you think that's okay. Finish. And it did, uh, you yeah, think it... that's okay, LB. You think that's fine. Hang on a minute. Yeah, but we also had, yeah, Rodri, who was poor. We had Bernardo Silva that was poor. We had Kovacic, who didn't know what the hell he was doing. Yeah. Apparently, Haaland was ghosting. That's four players. The only decent players on the pitch was probably John Stones, Grealish. I, I can't the company was all right. Yes, Akanji was all right, but all like right. we went to the we went to Madrid. Half of our and team I think that's play. because of the way you played. No, I don't think it is. I think Rodri was isolated again. No, no, Kovacic wasn't. was there. No, no, no. But Rodri, Actually, Rodri was isolated again. No, 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 no. He got bypassed players, in the Mitchell's plenty of, our, of time. Rodri's of first our... half was terrible, LB. No, but yeah, because he just kept on giving the ball away. That was not nothing because to do with... Because he was isolated and Real Madrid no, he wasn't, had bro, the was many, many times when he had like a Kanji stood next to him five yards away. He just kicked the ball out for a throw in. He's mentally fucked, bro. Rodri, he's mentally fatigued. Bernardo Silva, yeah, I don't know what he was doing in that first half as well. He just kept on dribbling into Real Madrid players. I don't think some of these players could see the colour white on, on Tuesday, man. They just kept on running into the players. I think some of these players are tired. I think some of them are mentally fatigued. But as much as you say it was a terrible strategy and a terrible thing to do, we still come away with a 3-3 at Real Madrid. And our team's now favourite to go through, not Real Madrid. I said all the time, you need a little bit of luck in this competition. Yes. You know I mean, you, you have to get and lucky in the it. Champions League. And we got lucky. Great. That's not my that's not my fault. We give this, Nobody we give said it's your fault. Nobody yeah, but we gave the chances to Real Madrid. But bro. we are here we talking take them. about... LB, we're here talking about the plan of Pep Guardiola and you're telling me that you're all right with... Okay, let me just give you a scenario. You play the same high line. You play the same high line. Vinny Jr. goes through. He's not a bozo this time. And they score. one nil at the Etihad. Real Madrid defend and you're trying to chase the game. Another counter-attack. They use it 2 nil down. It's a very plausible situation with the way you're saying you should play. Of course it's plausible. High line, halfway line. Halfway line. Your line is halfway line. It can be two nil down. Okay, what then? Of course, it's possible. It's a risky Instead strategy. Instead of a little bit dropping the line a little bit deeper, like what you did against Arsenal, for example, last, like what you did against Arsenal, you drop the line a little bit deeper to prevent them playing behind your line, which is what all what Real Madrid have, by the way. Couple of passes, bypass the press, boom, behind the line. That's all they have. They have nothing. You said you said. That's what I said. Real yeah. Madrid. But you disagree with what I say. You say no, we shouldn't play. No, we I just win. think no, 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 no. Because I just, I just think you should accept the risk. You pin Real Madrid back in, and you back your Kevin De Bruyne's, your Phil Foden's, oh, your yeah, Grealish's. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with this. I'm chances. not saying that. No, no, no. I agree with this. But I'm saying there's something else. I'm saying when you look, when when they have a goal kick, for example, right, or they have the ball, you are saying go full guns blazing halfway line and then let's press Real Madrid and get the ball, which is what you did in the first game. What happens? A couple of passes between Camavinga and Valverde and Cruz bypass the press, two on two. Bang. Two on two for 50 yards running. Vinny Jr. and Rodrigo have a whole field to run to with, with, with Diaz and Akanji like, oh my God, we got to chase these guys. It's too long of a run, bro. And oh my God, this happened the whole game. And the best they could manage was a draw. Because, we, okay. We, we went to the Bernabeu. So we gave them chances. Of course, it's risky. I'm not here saying it's not a risky strategy. But clearly, Pep thinks this is the way to play the football. You know, you, And you can sit there and say, oh, we could plausibly be 2-0 down. You could plausibly be 2-0 up if you press them and you create the chances and you put the ball in the back of the net. All right. It's opinion. To be honest, opinions differ. This is an opinion of someone who's coached by Pep Guardiola. Because your, your strategy work against 95% of the teams around the world. Because not a lot of teams have the quality. And that's testament to Pep Guardiola. Not a lot of teams have the quality to bypass your press. Not a lot. Probably I can tell six, seven teams around the world that have the quality to bypass Man City's press. Pep Guardiola's best. But it, when it happens, it's chances by the buckets. You know what I mean? Just buckets. Everyone goes behind this line. Risk, risk so Brentford strike. did it. And the guy literally fluffed his line twice. Well, bro, bro, what I would say is in the in the in the return leg, hopefully Kyle Walker will be back. That should help mitigate the the, the risk. Yes. And I personally would drop Ruben Diaz and play a Kanji in the middle, who's faster than Diaz. That'll help mitigate the risk. So hopefully, there's two things there we could do in the in the in the next game that can reduce the risk of Real Madrid. But you're never going to stop it. You're never going to stop it, man. They've got the quality team. 
You just got to back your forward players to win you the game, and that's what that's what obviously what we did. Maybe you don't press that high with maybe seven you, players. Maybe seven you do. Players. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. That's up to Pep to decide. And if and if if he does press high and we get caught on the break, people like you will be saying, "Why did he do that?" If we go there, you know why, them, right? You know why? It'll be because you won the Champions League last season, adapting a little bit. And I said that this meant it'll be me and you were on shows. And people, oh my God, hated my take when I said the Man City team that played from February. And I can, I'm going to repeat it again. The Man City team that played from February until May last season when they won the triple is the best team I have watched play football ever, mm -hmm. including the Barcelona 2012. The reason why, because they can play the tiki-taka, they can create direct, like what they did against Arsenal, long balls, right? They don't have to play tiki-taka and they can defend like they did against Real Madrid. They were adaptable. That yeah. was the best team. By the way, that was the best team I ever watched because yeah. the adaptability and the different way of playing football while winning every game, being superior mm -hmm. in every game. I hear that. Right? Now this season, you're telling me, no, I want to go back to the same city that lost against Monaco and uh, Leon and lost against Real Madrid while that's, being that's on top. How, that's not how we played against Monaco. That's just not how we played against Monaco at all. How did you play against Monaco? You were literally full guns blazing the whole game. Ping pong football. No, we weren't, especially not in the second leg. I was there. <laughs> we, we we were we were we didn't play like that. We just played like a fucking bunch of idiots. Do you know what I mean? So now nah, listen, it, at the end of the day, you have to you have to back the risk, man. You know what I mean? And oh, no. and if Pep thinks this is the best way, I don't I don't think you're ever gonna stop Real Madrid from getting in behind. But he can you can there's two things like I just mentioned there, you can help to improve the risk of that, but you've got to back your forward players, you've got to back your foldings, you've got to back your Kevin De Bruyne, they'll be back for the game at the Yeti Yad. You know, John Stones will have more minutes under under his belt. Grealish has just come back from an injury and played three 90 minutes in a row. I mean, he played very, very well. And like I say, we went to the Bernabeu. Half of our team dropped below par performances. And we still got out of there with a draw. So if we can improve on Wednesday and, and these players' performances can, can be better, you've got a bet that, that you're going to win, man. But okay. if we end up getting smacked on a counter-attack, then he'll, I'm sure he'll come in for questions as to why we played that aggressive. Let's see what happens, isn't it? All right. Anybody, nobody wants to chime in. Just enjoying the the good day. I mean, I I, I, I do think I do think you should slightly adapt if you don't have Kyle Walker. Like oh, good. his most Wasn't important bad, his most important kind of period or the most important game for him is Real Madrid pretty much all season. So I think if you What's my if you to? don't if you don't have him, you should drop him. Uh, if you don't have him, sorry, you should uh, you should change. But then are you not just inviting pressure? That's the other side of the argument. Are you not just in, uh, accepting pressure? If no, you drop because you no, no, you don't. You don't have to drop. You don't have to drop like you know Sheffield United. You like just prime drop. Arsenal Mourinho yeah. style last week. Yeah, you just drop, just drop a couple of yards so that you're not so expected. Because it's mainly the, the halfway line press where Vinny or Rodrigo are, are guaranteed to be on side because they can start their run inside their own half. If you just drop off a couple of yards from that, at least you protect yourselves slightly. But. Like you said, a draw at the uh, Bernabeu, you can't really complain about it. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Uh... Arsenal, though. The double? Is there still a lot? Okay, I, I want to I get Rory. Rory was in the stadium. and We're not going to discuss the double and the triple thing because I know why, why <laughs> LB is laughing. The, the feeling in the stadium after the game, Rory, how was yeah. it? Uh, well, right after the game, we all thought it should have been a penalty and we hadn't seen any replays. So it was mainly just robbery. Um, but no, I think it was a general I do want to discuss of... the penalty again, but yes, do you think it's a penalty? Yeah, I do. Okay, okay. Um, I thought it was 50-50, but Bayern Munich should have also had a penalty. That's yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that's that was fair. at 2-1. That would have gone 3-1, I believe. So that yeah. Be yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, but, but I think the overall feeling, regardless of the decisions, was that it was an opportunity missed. I think the feeling was beat them at the Emirates. You can go and, like you said, Mourinho style, like we did against City, get to Germany and hold out a draw. I think the feeling that was that when we won, won, we went one 0 up. Alfonso Davies was on a booking. We'd relaxed into the game to then concede the two goals in the way that we did was, you know, it showed a little bit of that lack of experience, naivety, because we continued to try and press them in the way that we had at the start of the game. That was where Kivio was getting exposed in those one-on-ones against Sane. And like, I just don't think that was necessary once we were 1-0 up. So, yeah, it feels like an opportunity missed. But equally, we're still in it. And it's a, we've come a long way from the days of 5-1. So, it's a bit of both. But 
Yeah. I watched the game back yesterday and um I thought I thought it wasn't too I didn't think it was a too dissimilar game to the City game, honestly. Um Arsenal got the first goal and then Ben White should have made it 2-0. That would have been huge. Right. And then uh, that's the Champions League that they go down the other end and, and equalize straight away. Um Bayern Munich had space in behind Arsenal's defense, just like Real Madrid had space in behind our, our defense, and maybe could have done better once or twice. Sane went through um as well, and he should have done better there. Ben White did a good tackle. Um but in the end, it, it it probably was slightly an opportunity missed. Not massively. I mean, you, you, Arsenal probably wanted to go to the Allianz with at least a goal advantage. I think that's a very fair thing to say. Um, but, you know, they're still right in it. You know what I mean? It's just going to the Allianz with only a draw. Not ideal. But uh, I think I think what, one thing I would say for Arsenal fans is like, if you know, on another day, you could have easily won that game. Yes, you could have lost the game, but you could have easily won that game. You know, you've got to take your chances. It's no good Ben White getting in the box and everyone saying, oh, what a run. But, you know, he's fucking he's got the whole goal to aim at. What and he just run. kicks it. Yeah, yeah but he, yeah, everyone's giving him praise. But, like, he just gets, he's got the whole goal to aim at. And he just kicks it straight at Neuer. That could have been 2-0. If that happens, Arsenal then, you would imagine, would just go, right, let's just sit back and absorb pressure, defend for our lives, you know what I mean? And try and get out there with, with a 2-0, if not a 2-1. Maybe they, maybe maybe buy and get one. But, but it is an opportunity missed, but they're still in it. Um, it'll just be interesting to see how they handle the pressure when they go to, to the Allianz. Man, full house. Full house in Germany now, waiting for Arsenal. I mean, if you finish 2-1 in Arsenal's favour, you say there's a good, chow, a good shot that they go there, finish with a draw, take the goal advantage. But no away goals now, even for both the, the City Madrid game and also the Bayern and Arsenal game now, it doesn't have that same zing to it anymore where if, you know, Arsenal score one, Bayern have to score two. If, you know, Madrid score one, City have to score two sort of a thing. It doesn't have that. That's not to say it's a, it's a, it's better or worse, but there's no real like risk at stake. You finish on a draw and then you get extra time and then penalties. So Arsenal can do that. If the defense is what's going to get them through, if they've got like, you know, the best defense and all that, which in the Premier League they do at least, Europe haven't been too bad either. That's where you're probably going to have to build from. Does that mean conceding possession? Does that mean letting Bayern Munich do their thing? Because if you've got Saka on one side, if you've got Martinelli on the other, Odegaard's going to be in the middle there. If you start with Jesus, for example, you've probably got players there that can maybe do something on a counter-attack if you let Bayern uh, you know, come towards you. I don't know, man. The, the Champions League is a, is a different animal altogether, man. You've seen it firsthand. As good as you are in your own leagues, like you look at Bayern Munich, you're trashed, you're trashed. You're Tuchel conceded the league to um, Alonso just the other day, but they still got something to play for here. And you guys got two things to play for. So then it probably becomes a chance of what do you do now? Yeah. Uh, I think way, as well. Go on, Rory. I was just going to say. Can, we, I can said we, this... before you go on, can we talk, guys, we got, we got about, uh, 560 people here and we aren't even on 300 likes. Come on, people. The like button underneath your live chat it, it helps the channel massively also i want to give a shout out to it's lb in the description magnificent channel fantastic content daily content by this guy always entertaining us with nobbins with, with with of course with tone with a lot of people that you like on this channel absolutely brilliant with martin of course and of course uh, rory talks football of course in the description as well Great. 6.30, daily UK time, daily show about Arsenal, updating you with all the news, of course. And Football Club, with Nick, of course, gets short videos, react to what LB is saying, and what Rory is saying, and what Hossam is saying. It's actually great content. All and you too as well, don't forget. Sometimes. And uh, guys, please go and subscribe to these guys. Absolutely brilliant content. It's just one click away in the description. You don't have to do anything, just click. Go and then come back, chat with us, and hit that like button. Let's get to 300 likes live, guys. It's easy. It doesn't cost you a penny. Sorry, Rory. I just wanted to get that. And also, if you're going to send a super chat, I'm going to stop by this and do respond to a couple of super chats that will send people support the channel. Send you super chats in. Get your opinions in, and we will respond to every one of them, please. Go ahead, Rory. Sorry. Uh, no, I was just going to say, because I, I think one thing is that and maybe some Arsenal fans were guilty of it as well, was underestimating Bayern because they're 16 points off top in Bundesliga. Like, don't get me wrong, they're not having a good season, but it's not as bad as I think some people thought in terms of people saying, oh, this is the worst Bayern side in forever. Like, they're probably going to end up on more points this season than they did last season. And last season, they won the league. So I think Bayer Leverkusen's ridiculous season has made it seem like Bayern are worse than they are. Um, and I think the result of that was almost, I think we played more aggressively than 
you know, we certainly played far more aggressively than we have done against City and against Liverpool. And I think we'll show them more respect in Germany. I think we'll go there. We won't play anywhere near as high a line. I don't think we'll press anywhere near as much. And I think that'll help us out. Because really, it was only when they were, you know, it was only Sane in behind, pretty much, that was causing us real issues. So uh, it could play into our hands a little bit in that sense. But equally, you know, a few players this season, even last season, have shown in the big games, those pressure moments, they can look like rabbits in the headlights. And this is going to be the biggest test that they'll face so far at the Alliance. So. Can I come in here and just say that I think one of the things I would say Arsenal, and um, mainly Arteta actually needs to sort out is what do Arsenal do when Kane drops deep? Because when I was, especially in that first half, every time Kane dropped deep, I just felt like you, you, your players just didn't know what to do. Um, there's no excuse for that in the second leg because Arteta should be getting the players together and saying, right, when this happens, this is what we do. And every time he dropped in that first, I mean, I'm quite surprised it, it, that it happened anyway. You would have thought that they would have sorted this out for the first leg. But for the second leg, Arteta has to get that sorted because, you know, it made your whole back line look nervy. Um, you know, Gabriel Saliba looked nervy. I felt like your midfield didn't really know what to do. Like, just get a plan and stick with it. And, and that that comes from the manager. There's no, there's no excuse for it happening in, in that second leg. Maybe, maybe obviously it's just superb play, whatever. But the, the the nerviness around the situation that should not be happening because it, it, it happened too much, man. And I was like, what's going on here? I was watching it yesterday. I was like, what's going on? And Saliba and Gabriel just look like just look poor. You know what I mean? I, I, in 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 there, and that's that's just because of they didn't know what to do. I don't think it's because they they were they were they were they were bad as in like they just dropped stinkers or anything. I just think like. They just genuinely didn't know what to do. And that's why the nervousness was around that back line. Arteta was arrogant. Think he was arrogant? Yeah. Explain to me why you think he was arrogant. He he fell for the trap, for the media trap, for everybody telling him that this buy him, including yourself, <laughs> including yourself. Uh, LB, you're part of the media now, uh, like it or not. No, he fell for the trap. Even the buy Munich actually fed him that. Oh, this is, we're going to one of the best teams in the world, blah, blah, blah. He thought, yeah, I can play a high line. I can contain these guys. I can push a lot of people forward. I can press every time Bayern has the, has the ball. I'm, I'm, I'm better than them. And I, I believe that Arteta didn't... Arteta didn't change. They played the high line. They played man on man on Kane. And they left Sani to run behind Kivior, assuming that my defense... He thought that Gabriel and Saliba will be able to handle this front line like everyone else in the league. Like what we did like against everyone. We're fine. We're good to go. And then... Within the game, the players found out that, well, maybe that's not as easy as what we've been told. Maybe these guys run faster and Kimmich and Goritska and these guys are stronger than what we think. Because you saw what happened when Goritska gets the ball and bodies Jorginho and do this and bypass them. We saw, Lyme, we saw Jamal Musiala gliding through them and they're like, do we tackle him? Do we foul him? What do we do here? We're not accustomed to this. And by the time they adapted, it was 2-1 down. By the time no, they adapted, I, I, Sani was... I need to come in here. I, I think you're wrong again. Okay. I, I, th I think you're just having shockers this week, bro, to be honest with you. I think Arteta approached the game in a similar way to the way City approached the game and felt that with a better team, yeah, we're going to go there. Of course, that, of course. I'm back in Arsenal here. One sec. He, and, and you can talk about the fact that, you know, they went 2-1 down and they got done on a counter-attack. Arsenal very easily could have been 2-0 up as well. Let's not forget that. You sat here before and said, oh, well, if, if Real Madrid do that against City on Wednesday and you find yourselves 2-0 down because they can counter-attack you, blah, blah, blah. Fine. <laughs> okay, okay. But, but Arsenal could have found themselves 2-0 up. 100%. I think... I, and they City, could have been 3-1 down as well. Yeah, but Easy, bro, you, by you, the way. You're, you're missing the point yet again. Mm. You just you just focus on, on, on the risks. Yes. You don't focus on the reward side of the game. Arteta went there... And clearly he knew the risk. You think he doesn't know Sane's fast? You think he doesn't know that there was going to be space in behind and that could be a problem? But he backed his Arsenal team, just like Pep backed the City team, to go there and score the goals. And, and on another day, Arsenal could have been 2-0 up. And yes, they could have been 3-1 down. But guess what? You know what I mean? You're playing against good sides. We're playing against the Real Madrid and the Bayern Munichs of this world. You're not going to be able to completely control them. And, and like I say, on another day, Arsenal could have been 2-0 up. And they should have been 2-0 up. Disagree with me. Disagree with me and say they could have, they, they shouldn't have been too low. Ben White's got the whole goal. He's got that second okay, goal. I, I can say the game. same. They missed that chance and they should have been 3-1 down. Correct. 
but it's a risky game. But, but also, Mo, they were those. I, those okay, okay. That we uh, apparently, were not really... it's different. Uh, sorry, Rory. Apparently, it's different for someone who's coached, who had his success ag- around Pep Guardiola, and someone like me who have seen different managers, different style of play. I've seen different styles of play. The difference is, I actually believe now. You think LB, which is you have seen, you're the most successful club in the recent era, probably in the world at the current, a- apart from Real Madrid. You have seen a lot of success playing one brand of football going forward all the time. And because you have Pep Guardiola, you think football should be played that way. However, I countered that by saying that Arsenal, if they went to the Etihad, for example, I played the same brand of football, I thought they would have been thumped. If Arsenal went to the Etihad when they played Man City and tried to play the same brand of football they played against Bayern or they played against other teams, they would have been thumped at the Etihad. They would have been torn apart. So he adapted. Why didn't he adapt? Don't you think he but, mate, he knows that Sani knows that? Come on. Okay, but but you're you're talking as if it was a structural issue with the way that we played. In reality, it was a it was an individual error that meant we weren't two 0 up from Ben White. It was individual errors that cost us both of the goals in terms of it was complete miscommunication between Gabriel and Raya that gave them the opportunity. Not the second the goal, Rory. Goal. Second the goal. second goal. Jakub Kivior makes an awful mistake. He gets far too tight to Sane and gets spun on the halfway line with no one behind This is him. not an individual mistake. These are instructions. These are instructions. Well, I disagree with, I disagree with that because we've not really seen... Previously, we've seen... I actually think the mistake was playing Kivior instead of Tommy Asu. Tommy Asu should have played. That's a mistake, fair enough. But... That's not a structural error if, if, you're, if your defender gets turned by, by Leroy Sane. That's an individual error because he's been turned and he's lost his man. And then he doesn't foul him and stop that counterattack. So for me, they're individual errors that you can't really count for. And, and if it was the other way, right, if we'd gone really safe and we'd ended up drawing nil-nil or drawing one all, then the argument would be Arsenal had the opportunity at home to put their, you know, their mark on the, on the game, on the tie, and they played it safe. And now they're taking a draw into uh, away. So I don't, I don't think the way that we played. I think there were naive moments, but I don't think generally the way that we played was the issue. And and again, right at the end, we could have still walked away with a three-two win. So yeah, I, I think I don't think it was arrogance. I think it was belief. I think you just got to accept that the way that the managers want to, and I'm talking about City and Arsenal because they basically play the same. I think you got to accept that like they want to be on the front foot. They want to assert their dominance. And to do that, you're going to have to accept that you might get done on the break. That's it. And 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 the time will tell whether this is the correct decision. So far, both teams have played two very good sides in Bayern and Real Madrid. And, you know, I've got decent results. City got a better result, clearly, than Arsenal because of the, the, the venue. But, you know, both both Bayern and Real Madrid failed, ultimately, to truly capitalise on that space because neither of them won the game. And like Rory said, my, I, my, ca- my counter to this is that City has had arguably the best team in the world for years and years and years and haven't won the competition the Champions League until Pep Guardiola adapted. A little bit. I'm not saying go. And by the way, the problem will be with my takes for you is that you're saying you think that I say Arsenal drop D. No. My take and my opinion is that you might have to a little bit adapt with your pressing against teams like Bayern Munich. That's it. That's all I'm okay. saying. That's okay. all I'm that, saying. And, and that's a fair. That's a that's fair all, take. That's all I'm take. saying. Which is what? the same. What? 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 So, so Rory just told, said when when we were talking about City. That I think without Carl Walker, you'll have to put the line a little bit deeper. You might have to play. I'm not saying deeper inside the 18. I'm saying drop it five yards. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Don't go all players pressing, for example. Don't give the opposition that much space. I saw Arsenal. As much as Rory saying it's the mistake that Kivior did, the first goal that Arsenal scored, ben, uh, Alfonso Davis had the ball at his feet and completely fluffed it line. He literally disposed Saka but left the ball behind him because he stepped on the ball. Arsenal might not have scored. Games are played on individual mistakes, but individual mistakes are different. Like when someone makes an individual mistake of like completely passing the ball, like Gabriel, wrong, that's an individual mistake. But if an individual mistake because the line is high and you got spun, well, that's expected when you play a high line and there is space behind you. When you play a high line and one of your players drop deep and cover the offside, that's a mistake, yes, but it's a result of you having the wrong strategy. That's no, what no, I believe. No, no, no. no, it's not. No, it's okay. not. 
maybe maybe it's a, maybe it's a vulnerability of having the correct strategy because not just because you've got the right strategy doesn't mean you're not going to have any vulnerabilities and i think that's 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 the, the case absolutely but if i see something if i see something keep happening i will say like i thought in arsenal time every time every time bayern bypassed their press i thought it was still dangerous i was still, I, I thought it was dangerous however in the second half arsenal which proves my point, right? Arteta in the second half, a little bit adapted and defended. He Sometimes he let Bayern have the ball. Am I wrong, Rory? He let Bayern have the ball a little bit. He's like, you can you can, you can can pass the ball around for uh, some time and we're not going to go press you. A yes. little bit more. But then, if anything, I thought it was even more arrogant to take off Kivior and bring on Zinchenko. Which because is he even went more... for it, which is brave. More control. Yeah. More but control, you defended but deeper second half than the first half. Slightly, but I mean, Komen yes. had a, Komen, Komen had Zinchenko on toast. Like, I mean, Zinchenko but deeper, but slightly. deeper was coverage, not at halfway line, behind. not at halfway line, not at halfway mm. line. Could you not There's also argue though that Bayern forced Arsenal back? Yeah. Well, you can argue that as well. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't debate that. But Arsenal can think... go like man to man all the way to Manuel Neuer and try to press that. Like First... Arsenal could have gone second half, man to man, all pitch, high line. Let's press these guys. Let's not allow anything. But they didn't. They, uh, had, but... they didn't have that much space in the second half. I'd also you know? say though was that, and I don't think again, I don't think it's arrogance. I think it's confidence. Tuchel was more than happy to leave Sane high and wide up the pitch, even when we were attacking, which. We're really not used to seeing at the Emirates. Even when, even when the likes of Liverpool and City come, we would normally expect Sane to be dropping deep with the fullback to double up on Martinelli. I don't think we were. I don't think we anticipated that. I think that was one thing where Bayern were more aggressive in the first half than we thought they were going to be. They did play a higher line and they played players high and wide. So I just think it was a good matchup. I think Tuchel's a, a good manager in cup games. I just yeah. want to say as well, just quickly. Yeah, I just think it's mad, Mo, how much you're pushing this when neither side lost. Because I believe that Arsenal could have had a better game. Yeah, it's if they it. scored the chances, that they had the chances. If Ben White Pretty scores much. and when he's won the lot, they'll have the better game. But you won't talk about that bit, though, will you? You just I literally you... said that that Ben White could have scored and that plan would have worked. But then after this, what happened? It's not Mikhartz's fault, though, is it? That he's got a player seven yards out in goal, the whole goal to aim at to make it. So, you, so you're gonna live off. Okay, so you're gonna live off of that. So you didn't score that chance, and you still played the same, and you keep conceding the same play over and over again. Because I'd say because the chances outweigh the risks. All right, we're different than LB. We're so different. That's why you support Man City. We're so different. Let's see when you get Mourinho what happens. Let's see when you get more. Oh, nah. Let's see when you get when you get a defensive manager. But anyway, I like these debates tactical, actually. I like it. It's just it shows me that there are pe people think differently about football. I actually am not a fan of having too much risk. That's just me playing, by the way, just me coaching, playing football. I am someone who likes calculated risk. Calculated yeah. risk. I, I don't mean, like I, think me I know what LB is coming from. It's the risk and reward thing. I like entertaining football. I, you're like, he's like, he likes attacking football, entertaining football. He would rather create 10 chances and concede five than create three and concede none or concede one. Yeah. LB would rather have 10 chances and concede five than, than, than create only three I'm and concede my, one. I'm backing my attackers to score the goals. Even though it. the percentage, by the way, is two to one, but the other percentage is three to one. But LB would like 10 chances conceding five. I like Create three chances, concede only one. Yeah, three, but one. that depends Different. on the players you've got forward, man. That depends on the attack. If you've got a strong attack, by all, like Liverpool, like of a couple of years ago, we had a scary front line. Come at us. We're going to come at you again. It didn't matter for us because we knew we'd, we'd handle it. We're going to keep creating chances to get more chances. If you don't have a front line that's going to get you those chances, then you're probably going to be more reserved and think, oh, let's take it back a little bit. Let's not, you know stop the opposition from getting chances and then try and nab something forward, in which case then it might be a counter-attack, then it might be a transitional play. Of course, LB is going to be like fired up because he knows he's got a front line in the midfield that can get the job done. My argument, you... 
Go ahead, go ahead. No. So my argument with you, Mo, was I don't disagree. May, you're, you may well be right that if we had played a little bit less aggressively, with a little bit less confidence, maybe we come away with a win. My my only real argument with you is that you think it was arrogance from Arteta and not confidence, which I think are two different things. I don't think yeah, it was arrogant. I think it was... Maybe I chose the wrong word. Confident. I, 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 can, I can raise my hand and say maybe I chose the wrong word. It's fine. I, I, want, I want to pull a agenda right now. Is Mo saying arrogance because it's Arsenal and only because it's Arsenal? How is Arsenal maybe arrogant? Pep Guardiola is arrogant. Arteta isn't arrogant. Arteta is naive a little bit. Let me call it naivety, to be honest. It's confidence, naivety, stuff like that. Maybe not arrogant because Arteta I, I, isn't I mean, arrogant. Pep is arrogant. Say. I was going to say as well, I feel that Mo, you're you're not you're also not exploring the potential vulnerabilities with the system that you would rather do, which Probably, I feel maybe, especially in the case of Bayern Munich, would mean Bayern Munich would, would have a lot more ball possession and that they would they could potentially squeeze Arsenal back a lot more and it could just be dominance from Can from I counter Bayern that? Munich. Arsenal Can. have proven this season that when they defend deep against the arguably the best attacking team in the world, they limit them. And they limit Liverpool. When 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 Arsenal went two one up, they definitely nullified Liverpool playing deep and the counter attack. They nullified Man City at the Etihad by playing deeper, right? Creating the better chances. Okay, arguably the better chances because I know that some people don't like it. So my proof, my my argument about it is that I have seen this Arteta guy prove that he's adaptable. And he, I'm not saying he should defend like what he did uh, at the Etihad at the Emirates, but uh, this defense has proven that they can completely nullify our positions, like completely take you out of the game. You don't exist. You don't create one shot. The team conceded nine shots, bro, in like eight games or like 11, something like this, something crazy like this. And it's by being adaptable. That's it. But my point, anyway, what, what are the chances at the Allianz? I'd say 35% chance. For Arsenal. Yeah. I know. Jam-packed. Allianz. Stadium. Fans rocking. They'll be up for it. Arteta can't do what he did here. Uh, you know, at the Allianz, what he did at the uh, the Emirates, man. You go all out, you're probably going to get ping back. Unless they go for it 10, 15 minutes early on and try and get an early goal maybe and then drop deep and defend. I don't know, man. It, it, it's tough over there. They're going to give it their all. The, the league's gone. They're out of the, the cup long time ago. The Champions League's all they got left, man. Yeah, I, I think that pressure could work one or two ways for Bayern. I think it could really work in their favour. It could also work if they do go a goal down, for example, in front of that crowd that have been relatively annoyed with them all season. Maybe it goes the other way. I, I think, ultimately, the thing that scares me is our performance against Porto. Like the the away, and even when we went away to like Lons in the group stage and lost, we're we're yet to put on a real dominant performance away from home in a hostile atmosphere in Europe. Uh, so that's mainly the thing that concerns me. So I would I'd put Bayern as favourites based on that. Yeah, same here, same here. People, let me do a couple of these super chats. Uh, Prize is saying Holland is average off the ball, no Ballon d'Or shout. I'm going to respond to you and I'm saying, Price, last season I was one of the biggest advocates for Erling Haaland Ballon d'Or because you cannot ignore 50 goals and a treble. His goals made Man City win a treble. So they owe him a Ballon d'Or. They owe him a Ballon d'Or, 100%. It doesn't matter how good you think he is technically. At the end, the guy scored 50-plus goals. He's definitely owed a Ballon d'Or. Uh, it's the team problem, not Haaland problem. It, if Haaland misses chances, that's his problem. If you need your striker to do different things, play Alvarez. That's my argument. But Haaland still misses chances. Well, he still does. But I get what you're saying. It's not Haaland's problem. Well, maybe. It's every player. We can't criticize players, my guy. Mr. Happy saying, Rory is spot on. Of course, you're an Arsenal fan, so Rory is definitely a spot on. <laughs> Leverkusen is making Bayern look bad, but Bayern have more points this season than at this stage in 217, 19, 23. Is yeah. it not true that this is Bayern's worst points tally since like 2011, though? No, that's what people no. are telling you. No. Actually, this this is what the Super Chat is saying. Point. It's actually yeah. better than 17, 19, and 23 at this stage. 
So yeah. Bayern are not underperforming. It's Bayern Leverkusen overperforming. Am I am I, mean, I understanding if, if, this right? Yeah. If if they if they win four of their final six games in the league, then they'd end up on more points than they won the league with last season. Um, <laughs> but Bayern Leverkusen are already on five points more than Bayern Munich finished the season with last season. Like oh, that's wow. how ridiculous what Bayern Leverkusen are doing is. That's mad. Frank yeah. is saying LB's having none of Mo's nonsense today. LB never had none, none of my nonsense, bro. This is why yeah. I love shows with LB. Got it, got it, got it, call it out, best. Frank. One of I the mean, best. Fraudulent, fraudulent. He's been paid off, man, by the courts. <laughs> it's one of the best. <laughs> uh, now, before we talk about Liverpool, I want, I want to get Rory's take about the double thing. Uh, and I'm not here to piss off LB. Was that take crazy, though? No, it wasn't crazy. I like I can understand. I think the real di the difference is whether it's better or it's more impressive or. I whatever. chose the wrong I... word on the show, which pissed up Nobin. I said better. There's nothing better than a triple than a quadruple. Yeah, I do think you can definitely make the argument. If you asked a thousand people before the start of last season, can City win the treble this season? And you asked a thousand people at the start of this season, can Arsenal win the double? More people at the start of last season would have said that City were capable of winning the treble than at the start of this season would have said Arsenal were capable of winning the double. So you can, whatever word you want to use to describe what that means, I don't know. Um, but yeah. Can we agree if something is harder to do, it's more impressive? But, but, but is it harder because it like the task is harder, or is it harder because the team is just worse? Okay, the task mm. depends on the uh, the competitor. LB, the task for for Usain Bolt to win the gold medal is definitely easier than the guy who is two seconds uh, slower than him. So definitely, yeah, the, the gold medal at the end, yes, it's the ultimate goal. But the task is harder for someone, like someone stronger to lift 200 pounds, right? Is easier for someone that is less strong. Does that make sense? So it's more impressive for the weaker guy to lift 180 pounds than the guy who lifts 200 pounds daily. So it's more impressive. It's tougher. But of course, lifting 200 pounds is the better task, but it's not the harder task. It's not more impressive. Does that make sense? I get, I, LB, you argued with me on the group, in the group chat, that because you think I'm little bro in Arsenal. Yeah, I do. And I am. Yeah, I know you are. That's why I said it. I am. And it's not an insult to them. Arsenal are weaker than Manchester City. Arsenal don't have as much good players than Manchester City. Arteta isn't remotely close to Pep Guardiola in terms of uh, ability, in terms of experience, in terms of the amount of times the guy... Arteta, uh, Pep Guardiola won two trebles already. Yes, with Messi, but he has won. He has won. Uh, Pep Guardiola is almost catching up to the likes of Ferguson in terms of trophies and stuff like this. <laughs> like, and <laughs> how old is he? You know what I mean. So there's no comparison between both. You have world class players that before this season they were in a Champions League final, they were in a Champions League semi final multiple times. They have won the leagues in the last uh, in the last game. That Aston Villa game by itself, when you won the league against Liverpool, is an experience by itself. It's just the nerves in that game is experienced by itself. This is why I did this. This is why I said that. Because it's much more impressive for Arsenal and much more harder for Arsenal. Going from the point of start of the season, as Rory said, for them to win a double. People thought that Arsenal have zero chance. Forget the... the, the the pundits that gaslighted Arsenal fans, people thought that Arsenal can't do the unthinkable and win the Champions League. How can they win the I Champions mean, League? Yeah, but, but, but Arsenal fans are on shows with us saying that they were. The I third don't care best about Arsenal fans. No, no, no. Because don't it doesn't judge suit your Arsenal argument. based on Arsenal fans. It doesn't suit hey. your argument. They was on shows saying that they they were the third best team in Europe. I had them about fourth. You know, this isn't some sort of miracle. At some but point, outside, no, but. Outside of that small group of Arsenal fans that overhype all the time, I, like for me, I said I'd be surprised if we got beyond the quarterfinals right off the bat. And there were lots of fans that said we wouldn't even get out of the group stages of the Champions League because it was our first time back there. So I would say you would have predicted us, I doubt, to make the final. Right, if you said where do you think well, how you, far no, did no, Arsenal no, get? Because you couldn't do that though, Rory. Because you can't they, these 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 predictions about the Champions League for me. When you ask in early on in the season, 
it's it's kind of stupid because no one knows the draw. Well, yeah, but no one no one thought in Milan we're going to get to the final. You know what I mean? Look at the draw. Look at the run to the final. If you get a lucky draw, if you get a lucky run, then you can get to the final. No disrespect, but they oh, didn't. But... And the, the the Bayern game proves my point that they were at home and they, at the end they didn't win against Bayern, who are having the worst. That's the worst Bayern yeah. team. Washed Bayern, yeah. Washed Bayern, worst Bayern team we have seen in twenty years. But, and but they didn't Arsenal win. Are a good they team. didn't win. They didn't. They want to get with penalties against Porto. Oh my God, this Porto Arsenal should win five penalties. Yeah, but but they just they just showed a bit of naivety in that game. But that's part the of day, the take. That's part yeah, yeah, but but, but at the end of the day, going through if you win five nil or you go through on penalties, it's the same, it's the same situation. You're still through to the next round. Yeah, but that's part of the take that they are not as they are not as favourites as people think at all. But they're still a very, very good football team. They should have won the league last year. The natural this is where progression. They play. It's, Actually, it, it, I argued this with Nobbins. Them losing Saliba last season and losing the league proves that that team was not as good as Man City. There's because a difference they, because, because they mentally it. bottled it. Because they mentally bottled it. Not mentally. They should have... No, because well, they the team we're was not... We're turning up against West Ham and they bottled it. The team so was they had no, they had no defender to come in for Saliba. It's basically... It. That no, proves no that they, 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 they had a good starting eleven that was playing out of their skin. And then once that guy got injured, it's gone. That proves that all we have seen throughout the season last season was an effort by 11 players or 12 players. But the actual team, the squad, and the manager are inexperienced. And he's brought in Declan Rice, which is a fantastic yeah. signing. Yeah, that was a, that was a great signing. He brought in Havertz, who's got plenty of experience. That's now that's now looking decent. You know, I, I just I think like at some point we've got to stop. Like we've got to tr what are Arsenal? Are Arsenal this team that are doing this like miracle sort of Leicester City story? And we're all like, oh great, are we going to say they're actually a good team? And they should be competing for the Premier League. And they should be competing for the Champions League. If Arsenal win the double this season, it's closer. <laughs> okay, let me just say something. This is going to be something. <laughs> if Arsenal win the double this season, especially with that side of the draw, with Bayern Munich, Manchester City and Real Madrid, and with the running that is coming for them, which is they are the, it's the hardest running, I believe that it's closer to Leicester's achievement than Man City's treble last season. And that and that's the that's the fundamental difference between me and you. You're you're treating Arsenal like this, like, like a for Leicester. For the double, not one of them. For the double. But you're treating the them double? like a Leicester. You're treating them like a Leicester. I'm not. I'm treating them like the club that they are, which is a very solid team that should be challenging to win the Premier League and should be challenging to win the Champions League. And that's why I'm not going overboard what, when you talk why, about this. Why should the team that has never... So you're telling me that a team that is their first year in the Champions League after seven years that never played in the Champions League, some of these guys never heard the anthem before in their life. And and I'm talking main players. I'm talking main, like the Gabriels, the Sakas, the Martinelli. These guys never heard it. Uh, uh, Declan Rice played Europa Conference League last season. You're mm -hmm. telling me David Raya is the goalkeeper, right? Uh, uh, ben White. These guys never heard the anthem. In the first attempt with a manager's fourth season in his first ever managerial job that mm -hmm. never coached in the Champions League, in a side with Bayern, Manchester City and Real Madrid, one side, you're telling me that, yeah, they should win the Champions League, by the no, way. I didn't, no, 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 I didn't say that, did I? Did, did I just say did they should say win? I said they should compete to win it. They should that's be all, up that's 100%. All, that's compete all any team to win it. Yeah, you're saying that you they shouldn't be getting battered three or four nil off the Bayern. No, I'm not Madrid. saying they should get battered, but I, I think they're saying you should be competing. The outsiders of in the well, you can say they're outside. I didn't think they're outside. I'll tell you one more thing: Atletico Madrid are above Arsenal in the Champions League. What does that mean? They never won it either. Yeah, but they have way more. But by the way, last season you never won it, but you were above everybody. So your logic: you you didn't win it last season. You you haven't won it yet. Last We've season when it. you played. Right. When you when you played it last season, but you were favourites. Why? It's not only about winning it. It's about going to a final, going to a semi-final, competing. This Arsenal team haven't done it. Like, it's not haven't done it. They haven't played it before. Well, you know I they haven't played that. They haven't played Champions League sports before. Bro, I'm not saying they have to win it. I'm saying they, they should be competing because they're a good side. They're a good football team, Arsenal. They should be competing. They shouldn't be going to Bayern. At the Allianz and getting smacked up two or three nil. Nobody's saying they got smacked, but they are an inferior team to Bayern Munich. Well, that's what I'm Allianz saying. So what you disagree? With? I'm saying they should be competing. So what you disagree with me? 
Dude, so they should be beating Bayern, but they're inferior. I don't get it. I, I don't agree understand. or disagree. <laughs> agree or disagree. It was less likely that Arsenal would win the double this season than it was that City would win the treble last season. I, I don't think there's much in it to win a treble. Only one team has done that in. But this you were the favourites for years. every. You were the favourites for every competition. Yeah, yeah, but that, ev- yeah but if, everything had to still go right, but you were still the favourites for every competition. Yeah, but that's just not how it works, though, is it? Like you've got to take into consideration that it's a treble. One team Bam. in the history of this country has done it in over a hundred years. Like it's difficult. So yeah, we were favourites for everything. Doesn't mean we're going to win them. But no but team. Then, but Manchester United, when they did it in '99, they were. Arsenal were the favourites to win the league. In the Champions League, there was Real Madrid, there was Juventus, right? Uh, Rory's argument is very simple. You went to the season favourites for every competition. Once you're favourites for every competition, that means you are expected to win every competition. That's that's it. That's the word favourites means you are expected to win every competition. Or you are the mm. more likely winner of that competition. That's what's called favourites. In a, in a, yeah, in, a, in isolation. Okay, now we're talking, LB. Now we're talking, okay? In, you're saying each one individually by itself. In isolation, Manchester City should win the Carabao Cup. Manchester City should win everything. But in isolation, football's not played in isolation. We don't play do the Carabao Cup. you believe you are into win another moment, triple this and then, season? What? Do you, win, do you believe you are now favourites to win every competition? Not in isolation. Um, I mean, the Premier League is up for debate because it's not in our hands. It is not, but you're still favourites. Yeah, we're, we're favourites because we're the better team and we've got the experience. But it's not in our hands. Um, Champions League, again, in isolation, you could argue that, yeah, we're favourites to win each individual thing. Let but, me respond that... to this. Go ahead. Lee, the answer is simple. Is When we say favourites, that means the more likely outcome. It doesn't mean that somebody else can't win it. Somebody else can win it. But it will be more of a surprise if the other person win it than the person that is likely to win it that is called favourites. Like, for example, if Man City lose to Real Madrid now, putting into context that, Real, that Man City have not lost a game at the Etihad in 60 games, I think that's less likely to happen than Man City winning the game. So Man City are favourites to go through because Man City don't lose at the Etihad. That doesn't mean that Real Madrid can't win, but it's less likely to happen. Simple. Yeah, I, I mean, if you applied answer, that to, I hope you applied, answered the question. If you applied that to Leicester City, Leicester City were in the Premier League the season that they won it. Therefore, they could win it. So, mm. is that just as impressive as if any other team, team would win it? No, but everyone has it way less chance. likely You'll to win it. No points. No, no, that's what I'm saying. That's why I think there's a a difference between you know how likely something is to happen, and if something is less likely to happen, I think we all agree it makes it more impressive. No, mm, like the treble is less likely to happen. Therefore, it's more impressive. That's why a treble is way more impressive than any other yeah, achievement, yeah. for example. So a, a treble is, is I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but a treble is more impressive than a double. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. uh, in, isol- yeah. in isolation, <laughs> yeah. yes. In isolation, yes. Can what I do you mean in something? isolation? No, I'm no, not in isolation. I'm tell you what I mean. gen- I'm, can I tell you what I mean, right? I'll tell you what I mean. If Napoli won the double last season, the, the, the Serie A and the Champions League, because they were in the quarter final of the Champions League, it would have been more impressive than Inter treble in 2010. Because we are, we were favourites to win the cup, the league, and we were one of the best teams in the Champions League, right? Yes, we weren't favourites to win the Champions League, but we were only behind Barcelona at that time in the Champions League. It's not that's not more impressive. It is more impressive because it's, it's more a harder, surprising because it's, it's a more, harder maybe more ta- because it's a harder task. Because you can it's say a it's surprising, but it's not. Okay. It's not more My impressive. My point is, once a task is harder. That means it's more impressive than the easier. It's time. only harder because they've made it harder for themselves from either even having inferior players and managers. Okay, okay, we agree then because they have. An but, 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 so they're making it harder themselves. Why are they doing that? It's not my problem. It's not more impressive. Nobody's saying it's your problem, by the way. I don't say it's, it's your not problem. More impressive. It's not more impressive. A Napoli double is not more impressive than an Inter Milan treble. And as an achievement, it is. It's just not though, is it? Because they've won less. It's they big. It's less, better. To, it's better to win the triple. It's a bigger achievement to win the triple, but it's more impressive to win when you're the underdog. Why the underdog story is always more impressive than the Goliath? Like, are we? It's are not, we joking it's, it's, here? 
No, the story can be better. You can say it's yeah, a better story. Okay, so it's called more it's impressive. It's not more impressive, though, is it? It's not more impressive because what's more impressive is is winning more. It's better Inter Milan to win winning more. three is more it's impressive than win Napoli more. winning two. That's it's, a fact. It's better to win more. It's more impressive. So it's more impressive to win more. Can I can I give you an example? The guy that is expected to win the gold medal, right? Wins the gold medal. The guy that is not expected to compete or win anything wins a silver and comes behind the gold medal. Which one exceeded expectations? I'd say the gold medal because he's trained harder. He might look after his nutrition more. He has a, he cuts out all the parties and all the drinking. That's more impressive to me. He did maybe, the hard maybe work. actually, maybe actually, the reason why the guy who didn't didn't do as well and finished second is because he doesn't train as hard as the guy who come first. Maybe he doesn't have a good nutritional program as the guy who come first. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't have the fantastic. correct. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. But when they win it, it's impressive. They so didn't say, train as good. Know, just, they didn't no, have no, a good just, nutrition. You just said but he didn't they win it. You said he come second. You said you just come second. But that's why if Arsenal if win a did. double, if Arsenal win a double, it's way more. It's it's impressive. It's not way more impressive. It's a tougher task. It's not more impressive not than expected. the treble, though, is it? Because the treble, you've won three. I think most trying to say is the position that they're in right now because City have done this for the last 10 years. We know what City is about. Arsenal have only really come to the to the front in the last season or two, whereas now it's like, man, in the, the last season or two to go to a final and win it and then win the Premier League, that's damn impressive. For City, it's impressive, but it's like expected because of City, because of the team that they are, because Arsenal are still below City in terms of like overall you know, let's say Arsenal are a four and a half out of five team. City are a five out of five team. Yeah, but we also have to just say like, so what are we expecting from Arsenal this year? We just give them a free pass in the Champions League. I'm expecting them to compete. I'm 100%. giving them credit. I'm but saying they're ready to win. Can I ask? Can I ask? Yeah. Can I, ask not, I didn't say that though, Rory. I said, I said. That no, but that's what I'm saying. People expected, not expected them to win the treble, but individually expected them to win those three trophies in isolation. I know, but. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I, I don't really care either way because we're probably not going to win the double. We're not going to win the double. But I can understand Mo's point is what I'm trying to say. I, I hear where Mo is coming from. I, I, I can't. <laughs> I love you, LB. I swear to God. Bro. You're, you're magnificent, bro. He's, mag he's like, I don't believe him. I, I can't just take him. I don't believe him. <laughs> anyway, people, I think it's, uh, you know what? You know why I'm arguing this? Because some people now are saying that Arsenal, if they win against Bayern, we fancy them to win every game from now until the end of the season. That's why I argued this. But I, if you ask everybody from this point on, okay, let's let's say Arsenal 2-2 at the Emirates go into them. Arsenal have the toughest running in the Premier League. Who expects Arsenal to win the double? Nobody's going to raise their hands. No one. If we put a thousand people in front of us, none of them, other than the... The people that I would say, and if you ask them logically, they would say, we're only hoping, but there's no logic. If I sat a thousand people now, LB, in the current, and say, Manchester City went to the uh, uh, to the Bernabeu, drew 3-3, three, three. do you expect them to win the triple? They have Coventry, Chelsea, and Man United in the cup. They have the easiest run in the Premier League. Do you expect Man City to win every, every trophy from now until the end of the season? They're going to tell you yes. If I ask people now, Who's more? What's the more likely outcome? Arsenal winning the double or Man City winning the treble? And you have to choose one. Choose one, LB. What's the more likely outcome from now until the end of the season? Man City winning the treble. You have to choose one. Or Arsenal winning the double. Which one? Guys in the chat, we have about 600 what's, people what's here. What's more likely? What's more likely to happen now? In very, April, very... April 11th, with the current situation... What is the more likely outcome? I, I would say season? what what's more likely is Arsenal should win the double because they're in the they're in cruise control, they're in prime control of this Premier League. There's seven games left. Seven seven games they should go and win the Premier League. If they don't win the Premier League this year, it's a failure. Their club, they should win the Premier League. We can't comes, win the Premier comes League. The narrative. It, Here comes the narrative. Here comes well, this the is all narrative because it's probably not going to happen anyway. Yeah. But 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 Arsenal should go on and win the league. So therefore, what's more likely is Arsenal to win the double. You think more likely Arsenal win the double than City win it? Well, they should they should go on and win the league. City cannot win the league here unless Arsenal give us an opportunity to by dropping points. Therefore, it's in Arsenal's hands. Therefore, Arsenal's double is more likely than City's double. And then if well, Arsenal no, beat the Bayern, not in 
the double's not in our hands because you can beat Real Madrid and then beat us. C correct, but I physically can't win the treble unless you guys don't win the Premier League and you should win the Premier League because you're in control. And it should, but should. You think Arsenal I should win the Premier League? The you think Arsenal should win the Premier League, LB? Arsenal should win the Premier League from here. There's seven because games Because they are top by one point with the harder running. You think so? Uh, again, you're little bro in them. Are Arsenal I am. Side? No, no, no. I'm yeah, not, no. By the way, I'm not little bro in them. I'm just giving you facts. They have a harder run in. They are the same points at Liverpool. And they are one point ahead of the mighty Manchester well, City. Well, hang on a minute. Same points as Liverpool. Liverpool are second. Let's stop this whole joint top nonsense. Yeah, there's no such thing as joint top. Arsenal are top of the table. They've got a much superior goal difference. And they've got seven games to go on and win the league. Seven games that are tough, but they should be winning them. That's that's a fact. They should be winning these games. Because you've turned first. it now, though, from what sh you've turned it now, LB, quite handily, from what you think will happen to what you think should happen, based on I don't know what. But but you saying you think Arsenal will win seven games, or they should because of where we're at. I, I think I think Arsenal could win seven games. No, do you think they will? Not do you think they could? Not do you think they should? Do you think they will? I, I okay. think I think what's the more likely is. outcome here? City winning older games again. We're gonna ask the same question: City winning older games or Arsenal winning older games? What's the more likely outcome? People in the chat, you let me know. If well, you I have, think, I think, if, if you want me to tell you honestly, I don't think either team will win seven games. All right, but what, but okay, I get what you're saying, and I agree with you, LB. What's the more likely outcome? You you, you bet your life on one team winning older games. You have to choose one: City or Arsenal. Which one you're choosing? I don't think either of them are winning seven. Okay, again, you're not answering the question. You're not. You're well, not you are, you're asking me a question that well, you want to answer a question that I don't believe in the answer. I don't believe. I don't believe. All right, these, all right, Elby, Elby. Someone, someone tells you that they they come from the future. One of two things happens: Arsenal win the double, or City have won the treble. They don't tell you which of those has happened, but one of them has happened, and you mm -hmm. have to guess which one has happened. And if you get yeah. it wrong, you die. What do you okay. guess has happened? <laughs> most I likely, love this, Rory. Oh. Most, most likely, I think Arsenal win the double. Nah, piss off. Put your life on that. No way. You put your no life way. on that. What do you want me to do, man? Oh, You've got seven <laughs> games left to, 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 to win the Prem. <laughs> Are you so we've got to beat gonna... you in the Champions League to win the Messi double. We would have to no beat chance. you. In the we, we've not beaten you once this year, Rory. So, so hang on a minute. Let, 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 let. You think I'm being funny, yeah? You played us three times this year. We haven't beaten you once. So that that what you just said actually works in your favour. We've got to go to Spurs. We've never even scored a goal at their ground in the Premier League. So that's probably another loss. Everything that I'm saying is legit, bro. I think All that right. you guys should be winning the Premier League for me and I, here and I. If you don't, it's a failure. So that's okay. why I'm saying, in my opinion, you guys. Do you will think go on if and win. City don't win the league, it's a failure? Because it's a failure. You should. You, yes, you should go on oh, and win the league. Every, I just if wanted you, to make sure that you are. Uh, you, you you apply the same content. Yeah, yeah. but bro, I just say it as it is, man. City City don't win the league. It's a failure. If Arsenal don't win yeah. the league, it's a failure. That's the Mate, aim of the game. Well. For everybody, hundred percent. You're in it. it you know, win, you fail. But it doesn't matter. People, it's people, twenty people. teams vying. One can only win. Everyone else bro, fails. That's that's the aim of the game. If you don't win the trophy, you failed. There's no ifs or buts. You failed. You, you, yeah, you can say we go again next year. That's all you can do. But if you don't win, you 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 failed. You've lost. That's the aim of the game, man. Only one trophy, isn't look, it? Look at Martin. Look at Martin. Arsenal own City. I keep hearing what's the narrative changing. <laughs> Big up Martin. Big up the Mancunian way, guys. Make sure to sub to the Mancunian way. Absolutely brilliant guy. Absolutely brilliant, Martin. Listen, people, let me do this super chat before we end. This 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 debate is not going to end. But we, I thought we pressed LB enough that he actually smiled when he's answering. <laughs> Who's going to mm. win more? I love the smile, bro. He doesn't I, believe it. Once man. the smile happens, LB, no way. You know. <laughs> you know. Well, Andrew, actually, just quickly, just quickly, Mo, yeah. yeah. Those Whatever you, want to right. you can, you can. So again, you can say who's more likely to win seven out of seven. If you actually I mean, break city, it, city for me. Okay, city. okay, okay, okay. If you actually break it down on the individual game, Arsenal should win every single one of those games. Yes, I agree with you. Yeah, so, sure. so if you look at it again in isolation, I, each game, Arsenal, you could say, well, so, so me saying. Arsenal should win the next seven. People laugh and go, oh, no, that's ridiculous. But, uh, City should win the next seven. But actually, if you look at an individual, e individual game, Arsenal should beat Villa, should beat Wolves, should beat Chelsea. They should even beat United. Now, people will say, oh, well, actually, you know what I mean? Your Spurs and that will be difficult. It's irrelevant. They'll still be going into each of those games. Arsenal will be favourites. I said so is it really, truly ridiculous that I'm saying Arsenal no, should win not. seven? Absolutely seven? Not. No. I actually said yesterday with Hussam, 
I said that anybody that tells me they see signs of Arsenal dropping points, right? I see no signs. Even after the Bayern game, I see no signs of Arsenal dropping points, right? However, if more likely than not City to win all their games than Arsenal, like if you're asking me to bet my life on it, of whose team is going to win all their games, I'll pick Manchester City. Is that not just based off experience, though? Yeah, it's part of it. Based on the manager, mm -hmm. Pep Guardiola has more experience. The players are more experienced. And also, if Man City, there is one more thing. If Man City go to the semi-final, and Arsenal, if they go to the semi-final, which is part of the double, because we're assuming that Arsenal win the double, so they will beat Bayern. If Arsenal go to the semi-final, I think their chances of winning the league slim may go slimmer. Because I don't believe that they will be able to compete with City in two games and still compete in the league. But City you know, talking. has enough capabilities to actually go in both competitions and the cup as yeah, well. That, that's the experience of having the squad and the player and players and the, the manager. manager for it as 100%. well. 100%. 100%. I, I, I totally. Actually, part of the double is them going to the semi final and having the extra two games against Manchester City, home and away, with the second leg being at the Etihad. And they have to go again, uh, uh, they have to go past that hurdle. Imagine that Arsenal, home at the Emirates and away at the Etihad. With Spurs squeezed in the middle of them away from home, and Arsenal will win the double. Man, Come if this was like a, Give me a break. knockout Give round, quarterfinal, maybe, yeah. maybe quarterfinal, semi final against City, Arsenal. I don't know, man. I think, I don't know. I wouldn't even know what to think in that instance there because you're looking at City, like we can go back to back Champions League winners. We can also potentially get another. Uh, Premier League, which will be a never before seen for Pete. Arsenal are going to be thinking, well, Rory, on your behalf, if you have to pick one, is it Premier League or is it Champions League? Uh, Champions League, 100%. So that's what I'm thinking. You haven't won it before. Best opportunity you've had since, what, 2006 or whatever it was. It, it's it's do or die at the moment, man. And you never know. Like when we went to Madrid in our, uh, to play Madrid in our first uh, time back when Klopp came in, bummed out. Finished fourth, uh, qualified Champions League, made final, lost it. I honestly thought we'd never be there again. Next season, we were there. We won it. A couple of years after that, we were there again. It could be a role, but you have to go through. If you make the final and you collapse, it's a learning curve, man. You, you play against, I don't know, like, <laughs> shithouse Athletic in Madrid. It happens, man. Yeah, I'll just quickly say as well, one last point, more, please. Yes. Yeah, you can say whatever. We've had, we've had one treble in this country in over 100 years. And I'm supposed to sit here with a straight face and say it's after 100 years, City doing a treble on its own is mad. But doing a back-to-back -back treble is more likely than Arsenal winning a double. I meant to say that's that. An indictment. That would be an indictment on the league and the, the teams in England. Individually, maybe. yes. It's more likely for City to win a triple this season than Arsenal winning you, the double. You think yeah. you see you don't hear how that how mad that is though. It's bro. mad, but it's the reality. It's the back truth. to back trebles. Back to back triple. If you told me in 2006 that I see Man City winning a triple of 2023, I would call you mad and crazy. Crazy. Yeah, but apparently I'm meant to sit here and say that's more likely than Arsenal winning two. But it happened. Okay. If you see in 2006, to Henry Arsenal 2006 final, if you tell me that it's more likely in the next 20 years that Man City will win a triple than Arsenal winning another major trophy, I will tell you you're crazy. I will mm. genuinely tell you you're absolutely crazy. In 2006, where both teams were, circumstances happened. But at the end, there'll be it happened. Go back to the time and ask million people. What's more likely in 2006? Arsenal winning a major trophy, a Champions League or the Premier League, or Manchester City winning a treble? They will, a million people will tell you Arsenal winning a major trophy. It didn't happen. And Man City won a treble. The other way of looking at it, LB, in, in the last three years, how many times have Man City won the treble? At the moment, yeah, once, yeah. Once in the last three years. In the last hundred years, how many times have Arsenal won the Champions League? Zero. So what's more likely? Arsenal winning the Champions League because winning one trophy <laughs> again, winning one trophy. We've never done it. It's never one, happened. Yeah, but hang on a minute. Winning one trophy is easier than winning three trophies. Not for Arsenal. Not the Champions League for Arsenal. It has happened. Champions League for Arsenal. It's never happened. Yeah, but you can't. No, no, winning, winning, winning three trophies is harder than winning one trophy. That's no, it. I agree. That's, fact, that's factual information. 
I agree, yes. but winning one trophy for Arsenal, seemingly so far, has been more difficult than winning three for Man City. <laughs> bigger, bigger, please. I'm, right? I'm messing around, but you know, <laughs> the logic's there. That's not about logic, man. <laughs> it is crazy, bro. Uh, Andrew saying Arsenal lost one player, Liverpool lost eight key players. Yes, Andrew, that's why Liverpool are in part of this. It is Manchester City and Arsenal. Liverpool I can't wait for fucking different. Bayern to slap Arsenal next week. <laughs> <then>. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, man. That means that means you're closer to a back-to-back -back UCL. Remember that. <laughs> I know, yeah. That would uh, prodigal, uh, <laughs> prodigal, prodigal. said, "What's more likely in the history of football: Leicester winning after promotion or Arsenal winning a double in first season of UEFA Champions League? Leicester winning the Premier League is arguably the best or the more the most impressive achievement in the history of the Premier League, in my opinion." I don't know about other countries, but I can say it's more impressive than anyone winning anything in the top five leagues. That Leicester season is something that we might never see again. Never in our life. Uh, Leon is saying uh, Liverpool to scrape the Prem City for UEFA Champions League. Arsenal bottle it. Well, people say that's a good, good for content. I believe if Arsenal win the double, I think it's a fantastic for content. I believe the inner will break. But there's constant either way. I, I, want, I want to see the, no, I want to see the world burn, bro. If Arsenal win the no. double, the world will burn. <laughs> Ruben is leaving at the end of the season. Ruben Amrim is leaving at the end of the season. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think he's going to Liverpool. But we'll didn't you say that... he's had no conversations though? Now he's saying no. he's leaving. I can't keep up, man. That's, bro, I assume that's just to do with respect, right? He doesn't, yes. he doesn't want it to look like I, he's I'll say so. like, because he's, a, he's about to win the league with Sporting. He's not going to just tell them now, by of the course. way, I'm leaving at the end of the season. <laughs> I think it's very of disrespectful. Course. LB, you are a triple winning team. Back your team. No, of course I back my team. I back my team. 100%. But you're saying Arsenal are more likely to win the league? You don't back Arsenal should, No, Arsenal should win the league for me. <laughs> they should win the league for me. Seven games to go. They're, it's their Premier League to lose. If they don't lose it, there needs to be an inquest at that club as to why three years in a row they've been in a position to do something and they've they've failed each time. Mo, in February, would you say City would have won the treble? No. Be honest. We were bad this season, remember. Lol. I believe, though. But again, if you ask me in February, what is more likely? Arsenal winning the double or City winning the treble? Even though you were bad in my eyes, I would say City winning the triple. By the way, it's irrelevant. It's a comparison between two things that might not happen, by the way. Both things might not happen, right? And they're more likely not to happen. But if something is more likely to happen than the other, that means the other thing, if it happens, it's more impressive because it's less likely to happen. So one's expected, one isn't. Thank That's you. That's all it is. Frank is saying, Nick, with Amarim denying talks, it's looked more likely that the manager will be Gerard. And John Flanagan as his assistant, you still see them competing. <laughs> no chance. No chance. Come on, man. Zero right. chance that Gerard, Gerard and John, Liverpool manager. John, John Flanagan, he, his rise to fame was scoring a goal against Tottenham. Come on, bro. Zero chance. Anyway, this will take you to Dan Potts where he has his show. Appreciate Rory. Talks football in the description. 6.30 today, UK time. Make you to tune in. What's coming up, LB? Um... Not sure to be honest with you, bro. I'd taken it easy in his just last sub. days. Just sub. It's LB, more LB, just sub. Both channels are in the description, but LB, it's progress. These clowns will be their needs if you finish seconds above Pep. Uh, come on, Lee. Come on, Lee. A lot of people don't expect Arsenal to win the league this season, Lee. Simple as that. Anyway. Uh, Nick, channel is in the description as well. Football club. Football club. Mm -hmm. uh, guys, make sure to club. sub to all of them. Make sure to sub to all of them. Appreciate everybody that has joined us. Make sure to go to Dan Potts channel. It's going there. We'll see you guys soon later tonight. MHF after Liverpool. We're out.